Right, so now I've got to uh, open up this box here. As you can see, it's pretty big. Um, as you can see, I'm still in the garage. The house hasn't finished being fixed yet. So, uh, let's get into this thing. It's almost like Christmas, isn't it? I think it's why people like Malvo videos, because it's like Christmas. Unwrapping stuff. Some people like them, some people don't. I've noticed when I did the Malvag series recently, I did like, was it five or six days Malvag video, one after the other? Because um, I had just so much footage I had to try and catch up with. I thought I'd do a series. And um, I actually lost subscribers from that. So, well, if you don't want to watch them, then don't. It's, you know, anyway. Anyway. They were particularly popular. I thought some people might like it. Anyway. I actually lost the subscribers. Right, I think we're on the final layer. <laughs> They've done a good job packaging this. I'm really happy about that. That's brilliant. Here it is. Okay, so. It comes with two broken handles, but meh. Um, <laughs> they look like they're bad design, not very robust to start with, to be honest. But that's what was in there. I don't think there's any bits. Oh yeah, this one's broken as well now. That one there as well. That, uh, that doesn't really surprise me, to be honest. You can see they try to package it up, but these things look so fragile. You know, something like sticking out. Anyway, um, that one looks like it's probably all there. I want to get a 3D printer, and that's the case, and I'll, I'll probably try and make new parts on that. But anyway, so this is what we have. So I'm going to get it on camera shot and make sure I don't fall up, knock it over or something. Let's just get it out. Well, I've got a packaging to get rid of. Okay. And there we go. So, Valhalla. 2703 programmable AC voltage standard. Um, this is basically um, the Valhalla equivalent of the Fluke, which I've been working on. So I thought, oh, well, the Fluke doesn't go to high enough voltage. So I thought, well, what the hell, I'll get another one. Um, I do want a piece of test gear which I can use for doing calibration kind of stuff and verifications, really. Well, you can't really calibrate as well as, you're, as, as accurate as your gear is, but. Um, so I thought I'll get this and the price wasn't too bad. Condition, as you can see, it's not perfect. You know, a few broken bits here or there, but yeah, as long as it functions, I'm not really too worried about handles. It's not like I'm gonna be moving it around much. Um, and these things were so bloody fragile in the first place, but looks of it, they weren't really brilliant anyway. So um, like if I can show you on here, like on the handle here, you can see there's a void inside the, inside the plastic there, gas trapped. Now that's not uncommon in injection moulding. It's quite common to see that um, on thicker sections. So, you know, it's just the way it is. But, um, yeah, things like that make them weaker. So, fab how it looks reasonable. Um, that looks like it's bent slightly, that ground connection there. And probably at the same time that's broken. Um, but otherwise it looks reasonable. Now what I have to do is go and change the voltage setting on this thing and we'll power it up to see what the hell happens to it. See if it works or not. Alright, time for some mailbag stuff. So we'll see how we go with this. Now I'm not trying to do this in one take because I've got so many items here. 
Oh, it must be close to 10 items. So, let's get started. I'm not sure how this audio is going. If it clips, I might have the level too high. It looks like it might be too high. Side. So these are a couple of pots. Uh, ones at the bag. Forty-seven k five percent. These are wire round pots, so these are high wattage. I can't what they were. I can't remember if they're three or five watt. Um, there you go. Bit of view, hopefully. I don't know the camera's going as fast focusing. So being having some issues with it. New camera, not been behaving as well as I'd like, but uh, oh, it's got the knobs on there and stuff, so it's all good. Well, the um, nuts. So much holding that back on. Should pop it open. So it looks like it's just clipped on with those. Should we open it up? Nah, no, you won't. I've got too much to get through here. Those for the voltage uh, leakage tester projects I've got lined up. Another thing for that, another option. This looks a bit squashed, but okay. Right, another microphone option. Right. Dress on it so you don't want to see that. Just one side for now. So here we go, we've got um, a mount with a standard threaded fitting for, for, for uh, camera mounts. So you've got one of those studs sticking out, you can screw onto that. Quite sure that is doing. Screwing up and down the outside part. I guess that's to lock it down in that base piece instead. All right. Um, so we have a 3.5 mil to iPhone connector. So I sort of plug into my iPhone if I want to do that. And oh, the other one's in my hand. What am I doing? And 3.5 mil jack, standard jack. So you want to plug it into a standard audio input source. A fluffy mic, and it's in there somewhere. I'm guessing it was pull it out of there, will it? Yes, it does. There we go. So, there's the extra mic. So, I don't actually know if this can plug into my computer or not. I'm not sure. Um, but it can certainly plug into my phone. So, the idea is you clip it into that. That's a lot of stretch for that thing to get around there. That's a lot of stretch for that plastic. That's concerning. Obviously it's all cushion, but wow, that's a lot of stress on that. The holes are nice and solidly, obviously, but yeah, okay. So we'll see how that goes. I mean, I've got this as an option because um, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to recall things in the future. Um, I thought I'd try a different kind of microphone when I was recording with the phone, but now I'm not recording with the phone, I'm recording with this camera here. So, we'll see how that ends up going. Next thing. It's like falling away. Not particularly exciting this one, although a bit different. And these are cable ties, but they're special cable ties. Um, I'll get one out, I'll show you. They're all the same. They're all the same size as well, all identical. So let's just get one out. And it's got a little loop on the end like this. So if I get the camera to focus on it, it'd be great. 
you get this lighting a bit higher. So there you go, it's got a hole in it. So what you do is you stick a screw through this, mount it on a surface, and then you can you, know, you stick it through that way, and then you can stick the loop through and cable tie bundles of cables. It's quite commonly used in networking and that sort of thing. Um, but I thought, oh, I'll get a bunch of those. Uh, I was watching, who was it? The Fiber Ninja. That's it, I think it's Fiber Ninja. Um, his channel there, and he's got, he uses these things. I saw those, and oh, those are pretty cool. Those would be really handy. Why well, didn't I know about those before? I didn't know about them. So, um, now we do. Oops, move that away. Make a mess at the same time. Uh, okay. We'll do this one. I know what this is anyway. And this is another Arctic manuals are now called. It used to be Arctic Media. So let's see. Uh, HP 931B, I think it's HP. And a Fluke 540B. Now these are a clue to what's going on. That must be must be Fluke then. Yeah, it is, there we go. It's Fluke. Just underneath the label there. So Fluke 931B differential voltmeter and Fluke 540B thermal transfer standard. These are a clue. I might have bought some. Um, and they're on the way. So at least I've got the manuals for them. These over here, I need to transfer this to the computer so I don't lose them. Next thing. Okay, it's an Apple charger. Um, a fake one, there's no logos on it. So the quality is. Mm, yeah. As well, them as well, obviously. That feels really light. That is no, um, I've actually got one here. Let's see. This is lighter. This is slightly lighter. Not much in it. But uh, yeah. It's for that computer I repaired recently. This is one, this is one of my own chargers here. So at least I can give the thing back with its um, with a new charger. I'll keep this one myself. I wasn't sure if it was going to arrive in time or not because the charger came with it was damaged. So um, got a brand new one now. I should really test it out and make sure it works before I hand it over. In case there's an issue with it, being as it's not an original Apple one, we'll find out. Go to one side. Okay, next thing. What we got here? Okay, a little gigabit switch. Uh, yeah, gigabit switch. I don't think it's got PoE. I don't believe it does. I think it's just a switch. Yeah. So this is for my home network. Um, for just the basic networking in my house, which doesn't require. PoE equipment. Unfortunately, they sent me this with this bloody plug on there, but what voltage is it? 12 volt, that's fine, I can place it easy. Not an issue. So it doesn't say what voltage is on the back, which is a shame. Oh, it says that underneath though, so I didn't notice that. So, instruction manual is a page of A4. Maximum bandwidth 100 megabit. It's a gigabit switch. Why does it say 100 meg on here? Hmm. Unless that's just one of the indicators. It does say it under indicators. Maybe it's just an indicator. One of these things, though, you never, you know, just because it says gigabit on it doesn't mean it actually is. 
It says it's got a gigabit on the bottom as well, but I'm sure I'll find it out in time. If it really is or not. Um, yes, check it back in the packaging. I'll sort that out later on. I'll do anything with that just yet. If it does turn out to be a gigabit switch, then I'll make sure I put a link down in the description because I don't think it was that expensive. I think it was reasonable. I'll make a place to put the stuff down. There we go. Right. Too much stuff. Next box. What's the point in that? Just put it. I mean, look. I want to wrap it right around the bloody thing. It's only in the bot. It's only on top. It's not protecting anything from the bottom, is it? Idiots. Anyway, never mind. Let's just stop it wrapping around the box. So it's another C922, which is what this camera here is right now. So I decided to uh, get another one. So I've got two of these now. I covered this recently. You might even see it in the previous part of this video, I'm not sure. So there it is. There. This time I've opened the box the right way up. So there it is. So we're good. I don't need to show it again. And recently I showed you the little other one, it's all exactly the same. So, specs are on the back there. Get the focus on it. There we go, kind of. Let's try and get some better lighting. Hold on. Try. It's not cooperating. Anyway. Here we go. It's kind of doing it. Such a big field of view. Come on, focus on the box. Here we go. The only problem with this camera is it's not focusing, it's just yeah. not close anyway. So, otherwise, we're right, so there's no them. The last thing. I think I know where this is anyway. Is a physical 931 RS IMS differential voltmeter manual, original manual. All right, so if I can get an original manual for something, I will get one. Um, so I got one. I saw one online. Thought, right, I'm getting that. Cost me a fair bit in postage and that sort of stuff, as it does. But um, it's the manual. There's not a lot to it, but uh, it's better than nothing. So, just for circuit board layouts. And because it's original print, you can see the layout really clearly. You can see the markings really nicely. That's really, really helpful to have. Um, yeah. Very nice. All good. That's enough of that. Oh, no, wait, it's not enough of that. I've got some more. <laughs> oh dear. They're almost finished. Okay, right. Well, I bought a whole bunch of parts when I was repairing the HP 4261A, which you probably wouldn't even see me do yet. It is fixed, but you won't see me fix it for a while. Well, maybe. Possibly. I've done live stream bits and those live stream bits will probably mean that um, you will see it fixed and working. But I've done broken I've got a whole bunch of videos recorded for um for that to publish. Anyway, these are uh seven four eight six N. Right, seven four eight sixes. Because I thought, oh, I don't have any of them, so I got some. And a whole bunch of other parts. Anything else I thought I might need, because I didn't have them. You know, common parts. Things I like to use again. Um, I got some, so I went through a bit of a phase and bought a whole bunch of different places. And this is something else I've been talking about again. It's some little clip leads. So I keep finding myself needing to clip things together and you know act as jumpers and that kind of thing. And I keep thinking, oh, I haven't got any bloody jumper leads for do that. So I bought some clip leads. These are pretty cheap, you know, you're talking a few dollars. Um, not much at all to get a whole bunch of these. 
So, you know, if you need clips on together, you got little crocodile clips and etters jumpers and do what you need to do. Um, I can mainly get some for a while. I think I actually did order some a while ago, but I don't have any. So I think they probably never arrived. Um, I'm talking six months ago, maybe longer. And I was looking through back through my history because I did a, I was trying to find these things. And um, I saw I actually had some there. I thought, oh, that's interesting. Because I don't have any. So, I don't know. Maybe I've lost them or whatever. But, you know, here's some now. Okay, now that's the mailbag, I think. Yes. Right, catch you later. Don't forget to subscribe. Tell your friends. Click the bell icon down there. Make sure it's set to ring so you get notifications. Thanks to my Patreon supporters. I could use some more if you want to give me some money to help support the channel and make me buy things like this. That'd be great. Um, what else can I say? Not much. Catch you later.